Hey guys, this is Greg from Vertex Library, and in this video, I'm going to answer a question that I often see in the CG community, which is how do you use the atlases that come with Megascans? So there are a few tutorials already out there which basically show you how to manually model out all the different pieces from one of these texture atlases. And while there's nothing wrong with any of these techniques, I just find it too time consuming. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create procedural geometry in Houdini from the opacity maps that come with Megascans. So all you need to follow along with this tutorial is the free Houdini Apprentice edition and some basic knowledge of working in Houdini. You can also download the Houdini scene that I'm using from the link in the description. So here's an example of the finished result that we'll get from uh, following this tutorial. And if I just go into this uh, geometry object here and go to the very top, you'll see that we start off with a basic grid. So I've got a grid about size 10 by 10 and it's got no internal subdivisions, so the row and columns are 2x2. Two two. And the next thing we want to do is assign UVs. So we're just going to project a single tile UV uh, across the entire surface here. So I've set the scale also to 10x10. 10 10. And because of the way the UV project works, uh, by default it projects from a different axis than our surface here. So we have to rotate it by negative 90 degrees in the X. You also need to set the group type to points so that we actually project the UV attributes onto every point on our surface. Uh, we can also preview our UV by using a UV quickshade node. And this is where I plug in the uh, maple leaf uh, alpha map here. So you can see that we've got uh, the maple leaf covering the entire span of our grid. So that's just for preview purposes. Uh, we can continue down the chain. And basically what we're going to do in this tutorial is subdivide this grid uh, so many times where we get enough points or vertices to where we can apply a color to each point from our opacity map. And then what we can do is we can filter out all the points and delete the ones that have a black or near black color. So if I just turn on this uh, subdivide node, uh, you can see I'm using a depth of about eight and I've got this secondary subdivide node here. And the reason for that is sometimes uh, a depth of eight or even 10 may not be enough. And you can see that if we set this to 15, you'll get this warning here. And it basically says that using a depth of 10 is extremely deep. And if you want more, you got to use multiple subdivide nodes. So I usually go to about eight. And then if I need to double that, then I can use a secondary uh, subdivide node. Uh, but for the moment, I think eight is enough for this uh, maple leaf. So the next thing we want to do is assign a color to every single point on our grid. So I'm using an attribute VOP and inside that there's only one node that you have to create and that's the uh, texture node. So you connect up the UV inputs and outputs and output the color of the texture into the uh, color attribute of our points which uh, by default is called CD. And this is where we can plug our um, opacity map and the only thing I've changed here from the defaults is the wrap mode. And I've set that to decal as I don't want it to uh, repeat as that can sometimes give strange artifacts around the edges. So if we go back and enable this, you'll see that now we're getting that, that color applied to every point. And you can directly see the influence the subdivisions has by setting it to a lower value. So you can instantly see that a depth of four doesn't have enough resolution to get a proper cutout of this maple leaf. So I'm going to set it back to eight. And the next thing you want to do is create a delete node and you want to make sure that the operation is set to delete non-selected. So what we're going to do is basically select all the white points and we're going to use the uh, number feature and we're going to use delete by expression. 
So this expression is basically using the point function to iterate through all the points on our grid and get the color and then check if it's uh, larger than a value of 0 0.1. So the first argument we put in the point color node here. Uh, we use the PT keyword which specifies the point number and we want to evaluate the color which is CD and we want to get the first channel of our color. And once you do that you'll see that all the points above 0 0.1 will be removed. Now if you look at the geometry here it's very close to the edge of our opacity map which isn't going to be suitable uh, for rendering as we're going to get strange intersections between the opacity and the actual geometry. So what we're going to do is we want to expand this edge out. And the best way to do that is to first use a poly extrude to basically pull out the uh, geometry and make it a solid object. And I've just set the distance to 1 and I've enabled this output back so that we get the bottom face as well. And because I moved it uh, up by 1, I'm also going to move it down by negative 0.5 so that the grid is cutting through the center of our um, maple leaf here. And the next thing I want to do is create a second poly extrude node and this time when we use the distance uh, it's going to extrude from the side faces as well and this is giving us that edge padding that I was talking about before where we can sort of safely create a surrounding edge around the opacity map so that we don't get any strange intersections when we render it. So obviously you can see that the geometry here is not really usable for anything. So we're going to remesh this uh, using VDB and I've got a VDB from Polygon's node here and basically what it does is converts the entire polygon mesh into a volume and we can control the resolution of our volume with this voxel size here and setting that to a lower value is basically going to make the individual voxels smaller. So I've set it to 0.1 which is a good value for this uh, maple leaf and then I want to immediately convert it back into polygons and you'll see instantly that that gives us a very nice clean topology uh, which we can continue to use throughout the uh, rest of the tutorial. So the last thing I want to do is smooth it out a bit and I want to start looking at how we can turn this back into a flat piece of geometry. And the best way to do that is to simply use a boolean and use another grid uh, the same size that we used before, 10 by 10 and use an intersection uh, operation. So here I've got the grid connected to the first A input so I want to make sure it's treated as a surface and not a solid and I also want to make sure that I'm not detriangulating the internal polygons as that's going to make it difficult to remesh later. So I want to have some sort of uh, topology here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to look at our normals. Now the best way to sort of clean up our normals is to use a facet node. And if we enable pre-compute normals it's just going to clean up all the normals and set them to a correct value. So now that we have our clean geometry here we can add a bit of deformation to make the leaf not perfectly flat. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a bit of even topology uh, with a remesh node. And I've just set the iterations to 5 and used a fixed length target edge length of 0.2. And you can play with these values until you get something that kind of feels right. Uh, but these are the values that I've used for this demo. So the next thing I want to do is create another attribute VOP. And if we go inside it, I've just got a turbulent noise here with the position values connected together and I output the noise into a displace along normal node and all that does is take the modified position values from our noise and displace them along our normal. So if I go back and enable this you'll see that we're getting this nice subtle uh, rippling effect throughout the leaf and it's, it's kind of giving this crumpled effect. So 
the next thing I want to do is uh, optimize a bit of this topology and lower it down so that it's suitable for rendering. So I'm just using a poly reduce here and I've set the keep value to about 10%. And you want to make sure that you have the stiffened border to at least one. And that's going to keep the, uh, the boundary edge sort of intact. So the last thing we want to do before we kind of export this is we want to assign a new set of UVs. And you can pretty much just copy the previous uh, UV project node and use the exact same values. And if I just preview again with a quick shade node, you can see that we've achieved the final result that you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. So here I've gone ahead and plugged in an actual Megascans texture. And the first thing I needed to do to get this kind of result was increase the amount of subdivisions. So I enabled this second uh, subdivide node and set the depth to 2. I also had to adjust the distance on the second uh, poly extrude that we've got here to something a lot smaller. There's a lot of really tight gaps here, and if I wanted to get a single piece for each of these, I had to set it a lot lower than it was before. I also needed to decrease the voxel size to something smaller than 0.1. So for this particular texture, I needed 0.02 to get enough resolution to where I could really separate all these different pieces. So the last thing I want to look at is how we can export this to a different application such as Maya and save ourselves uh, an additional step of having to separate this after we export. So I've got an assemble node here, and if I enable the create groups, basically what it's going to do is it's going to take all the geometry and divide it into groups based on connectivity. So basically what that means is any face that is connected to another face will be included in its own group. So finally, that passes through a null node here and into a ROP output driver. And typically in the Apprentice version, you can't export uh, sequences or Alembic files. So I'm just using this output driver here to export a single OBJ that I can use in Maya. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you subscribe. And don't forget that you can download the Houdini scene from the link in the description. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I'll see you in the next one.